Let us pray. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Glory, alleluia. Glory, alleluia. Glory, alleluia. Praise the Lord, holy, holy, holy is the Lamb. Holy, holy is the Lamb. Holy, holy is the Lamb that was slain. Glory, glory, alleluia. Glory, alleluia. Glory, alleluia. Praise the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is the Lamb. Jesus, Jesus is the Lamb. Jesus, Jesus is the Lamb. That was the glory. King of glory, we worship you. Yes, Lord. The one who says, let there be peace and there was peace. Yes. We bow before you. Yes, Lord. Today, like never before, please be glorified. Amen. And in all our lives, Father, let there be peace. Amen. In our families, let there be peace. Amen. In your church, let there be peace. Amen. In our nation, let there be peace. Amen. All over the world, Father, send back your peace. Amen. Thank you, Almighty God. Thank you, Lord. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Uh, someone shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> we want to look at Philippians chapter 4 from verse 4 to 7. Philippians chapter 4 from verse 4 to 7. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. You are to rejoice in who? Lord. And you are to rejoice in the Lord always. Because the Lord is constant, then your joy will be constant. Let your moderation be known unto all men. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing. That's the old way of saying, don't worry about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Peace is in degrees, in categories. Category one, no peace, absence of peace. Category two, peace, ordinary peace. Category three, we have great peace. Category four, all-round peace. Category five, peace like a river. And then comes the peace of God 
that passes all understanding. Our God is a God of peace. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 20. Hebrews 13 verse 20 says, He is the God of peace. Our Lord and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ himself is called the Prince of Peace. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. Isaiah 9 verse 6. When he was born on earth, and the angels came to sing, when the hosts of heaven gathered to announce his birth, they sang, Peace on earth. And in John chapter 14, from verse 12, I mean, just verse 27 will do. John 14, verse 27. He said, Peace I live with you. My peace give I unto you. That tells you straight away you can have everything, but if you don't have the Prince of Peace, you won't know the meaning of peace. Oh, I've told you the story of a friend of mine who was extremely wealthy. That by the time of his death, in far away Australia, he had more than $250 million. I will tell you how rich he was. But he had no peace. Because when the Lord sent me to him and we were discussing, he told me every time he closed his eyes to sleep, he will find himself among dead people. People with half head, uh, broken bodies, people who had died years before. And so he is always afraid to sleep. When you give your life to Jesus Christ, that is when peace steps in. Then there is great peace. Psalm 119 verse 165, Psalm 119 verse 165 says, They that love the law of the Lord, great peace have they. And that nothing shall offend them. He said, Great peace had for those who love your law. Nothing shall offend them. Means nothing will worry them. They won't be bothered by anything at all. In Isaiah 54 verse 13, Isaiah 54 verse 13, the Almighty God says, because you are going to teach your children the way of the Lord, then peace, great peace, shall be given unto them. That is your children too, not only you, provided you bring your children up in the way of the Lord, your children will enjoy great peace. For example, in Genesis 18, from verse 17 to 19, Genesis 18, 17 to 19, the Almighty God said, I know Abraham to bring up his children in the way of the Lord, which is what Abraham did which will explain the kind of peace that Isaac had in Genesis chapter 22. You can read it from verse 1 to 18. Genesis 22 from verse 1 to 18. How do we know this boy was taught in the way of the Lord? When they were climbing the mountain, where he was going to be sacrificed, he said to the father, I can see the wood, I can see the fire. Where is the lamb? But that boy knows that you need something for the sacrifice. And when they got to the top of the hill and the father began to bind him, to lay him on the altar, this boy had a peace you can't describe. Because he was young, he was strong, he could have outrun the father. But the father was well over a hundred years old. But he had total peace, great peace, that only the children who have been brought up in the way of the Lord can ever have. 
I can remember years ago when we first moved to this camp, Redemption Camp. Our neighbors were pythons. And there were many of them. I mean, we were killing them at a regular interval. Even I killed one with my walking stick when going for prayer work. This was also the headquarters of highway robbers. And yet, when I decided to leave Moshi to come here, and uh, <laughs> we had a little bit of argument, because my wife felt that uh, leaving Moshi to come to this bush is like leaving fry pan for fire. For the first time in our life, and the only time in our marriage, we became democratic. <laughs> we got the children together. I said, let us vote. All those who are in favor of going to the camp, say yes. And they all said yes. And I joined their yes. <laughs> and we moved in here. They said yes because they just felt if daddy is going there. Uh, that it will take care of us. Let's go. And in any case, we'll have an opportunity to ride bicycles, the kind that we can ride in Moshi. And then there is what is called multiplied peace. In the olden days, when a king wants to greet his subjects, he starts by saying, Peace be multiplied unto you. That's the royal greeting. Daniel chapter 4 verse 1, Daniel 4 verse 1, Nebuchadnezzar was writing to the people, he said, all of you my subjects, peace be multiplied unto you. In Daniel chapter 6 verse 25, Daniel 6 verse 25, when Darius was writing to all his subjects, he started by saying, peace be multiplied unto you. And when Peter was writing his letters, because he was an elder statesman, he was as it were a king among Christians then. He said again and again, Peace be multiplied unto you. First Peter chapter 1, verse 2. First Peter chapter 1, verse 2. And Second Peter chapter 1, verse 2. In other words, if you already have peace, and I believe that by now some of you have come to the conclusion there's nothing to worry about. I pray today that your peace will be multiplied. Amen. I remember one occasion I was traveling from Britain to Nigeria and there was a great man of God and his wife uh, in the same plane. And he, according to his testimony, which we had later on, he told his wife, ah, that the Jews in the plane. <laughs> Nothing to worry about. But then as we were halfway through the journey, we ran into some very serious turbulence. And the plane was jumping up and down, jumping up and down. Then he, he, he said he got up looked at where I was and found that I was fast asleep. Oh, he returned and told the wife, there's nothing to worry about, daddy is sleeping. He said his faith is a great peace was multiplied. I pray for all of you, whatever may be the level of your faith or peace, may that peace be multiplied in Jesus' name. Amen. And then there is what is called all-round peace. All around. Peace, physical. Exodus 15, verse 26. Exodus 15, verse 26. Made it clear that you could be completely free of every sickness, of every disease, because the Lord will be your physician. Peace, material. In Psalm 92, from verse 12 to 15, Psalm 92, verse 12 to 15, the Bible says the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He won't have to worry anything at all about material things. After all, it is written, my God shall supply 
all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Philippians 4 verse 19. And then peace spiritual. Uh, if you read the story that you have mentioned again and again in Mark chapter 5 verse 20, verse 2 to 20, Mark 5, verse 2 to 20, about the madman of Gadara. If anybody had a storm, that man had storm. Because according to Bible scholars, there were 6,000 demons in him. But when the Prince of Peace came in, suddenly he had peace, peace spiritual. For example, in 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 24, 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 24, the Bible says that Solomon had peace all around. All around. At a time when kings go to war every year, every year, throughout the reign of Solomon, there was not a single war. Why? Because God had made a promise to his father. In 1 Chronicles chapter 22, verse 9. 1 Chronicles 22, verse 9. God has told David, when they were discussing the issue of building a temple for God, and God said, no, David, you can't build for me because you have shed too much blood as a warrior. He said, but his son will be born to thee. And he will be a man of rest. He said, I will give him peace from all his enemies. I will give peace and quietness unto Israel in his days. When you talk about all and peace, you look for somebody called Solomon. Physically, the only time we heard that he was sick was when he was about to die. Materially, <laughs> he was one of the richest men who ever lived. Spiritually, the Bible says God loved him. I remember very well one old man, I'm sure you've heard me tell about him, who came here when he was uh, two weeks to the age of 88, I think. And he said that he has come to me for prayers. I said, yes, what about? He said uh, when he was 44 or so, uh, a prophet came to him. And he prophesied everything that will happen to him in detail. How many houses he will build, how he will prosper, etc., etc., everything. But he said that at the age, I can't remember very clearly now, whether 88 or 84, he will die. And that there are only two weeks to go before that date will come. He said that's why he has come. So I could pray for him, uh, be ready to go. I asked him, are you ready to go? <laughs> he said, well, not really, but uh, the prophet said, and everything he had said came to pass. I smiled. I said, you just gave your life to Jesus Christ just about two years or so ago. I mean, if you see his house in his town, uh, <laughs> If they don't show you the way, if you enter into his house, you will not find your way out. That's how big the house was. After he gave his life to Jesus, he came and built a two-bedroom bungalow in the camp here. And apparently, as soon as he realized that the day was coming close, he moved from his big house somewhere nearby to come and live here. He said, I'm not afraid. What else do I want? I have been healthy. God has prospered me. I know now I'm going to heaven if I die. He said, I just want God to, I want you to pray that my passage will be easy. He had peace all around. Of course, I told him, sir, that prophet must be a great prophet, but by the grace of God, the greater prophet is here. And as far as I'm concerned, you are not going anywhere yet. Now that you are born again and you want to serve God, you are not going anywhere yet. That man, when he was about just few 
days or so before he turned a hundred. He sent for me and said, please let me go. <laughs> let me go. I said, no problem. Me, myself, I have no intention of living to be a hundred. Then there is a peace that is like a river. God said in Isaiah 48, verse 18, Isaiah 48, verse 18, he said, Oh, that thou had hearkened to my commandments. Oh, then had your peace been like a river. You know, peace you can swim in. In Isaiah 66, from verse 12 to 13, Isaiah 66, from verse 12 to 13, he described that kind of peace as the peace a baby has. When he's been crying, and then the mother picks up the baby and gives the baby breast to suck. At that moment, mm, it doesn't matter what's going on anywhere. The baby is at peace. He knows he's secure. That's the kind of peace that Paul and Silas had when they were thrown into prison in Acts chapter 16 from verse 16 to 34. Acts 16, 16 to 34. And they knew death could be coming the following day. But they were singing. That's what we call peace. Like a river. The kind of peace that can sing in the day of trouble. Why do you have this kind of peace? Because you have heard from God. Usually you have that kind of peace because God has spoken to you. In Acts 16 from verse 9 to 10. Acts 16 from verse 9 to 10. God had sent a messenger to Paul in a dream. Come over to Macedonia and help us. He knew God sent him to preach. So he went there to preach. He landed in prison, said, no problem. I'm seeing in his perfect will. It's good to be able to hear from God. And I'm decreeing to all of you who are my children that that hearing ear, that ear that can hear God, the Almighty God will give it to you. Yeah. Because once you can hear from God, it doesn't matter what's going on around you, you will be at peace. Look at me now. 100% at peace. Why? Because I have had a little bit for my daddy. Uh, don't pay attention to what mockers may be saying. <laughs> I'm the one who had, and I know what I had, and because I've had from him, oh Lord God Almighty, peace. I've had all, a lot about him too, or from him too. Uh, I, I don't know if I should be saying that, but maybe to encourage you because I, I understand that some people who are mocking you. Uh, that you, you trust everything your father says. Uh, you know, like I told you, just pray for them. Because he said they should laugh loud and clear for as long as they have the opportunity to laugh. He said very soon they will discover he who laughs last, laughs best and laughs the longest. I've told some of you the story before. We, we were going to Heathrow in uh, our blessed uh, Nigeria Airways of Blessed Memory. Uh, <laughs> and we got to Heathrow and they asked us to fasten our seatbelts. We did. And then suddenly the captain came and said, well, ladies and gentlemen, we have a little problem. What's the problem? He said the landing gear of the plane has refused to come out. Oh, that's a little problem. And I, I, I was in traveling first class in those days because somebody, somebody bought the ticket. And there were all 
all the great men, high and mighty there. there. That day I saw that worthy people don't want to die. There was commotion all over the place. There was a woman sitting behind me and was, oh God, I'm going to London to take care of my grandchild. Nobody asked her. And there was a man there who had a walking stick made of gold and the handle was encrusted with diamonds. And he has been going to the toilet regularly just to show us the walking stick. Now when they, we heard what the uh, pilot said, this time he really wanted to go to the toilet. <laughs> he, he got up and the hostess said, sit down please. He said, who said so? <laughs> and I'll tell you the truth, I was troubled. Ah, Lord, when I was saying goodbye to my children last night, you didn't tell me this would be my last flight. And then I heard him say, no, don't worry yourself. I want to talk with you. And I need to talk to you before you land. As soon as you get down, they won't let you listen to me. Oh. I just sat down snugly by the, by the window where I was sitting listening to my father. And there was pandemonium all around me. I was as cool as cucumber. The, the pandemonium became intensified when the pilot came back and said, ah, ladies and gentlemen, calm down. After all, you know that the firefighters in Nitro are very efficient. Hey, firefighters, you <laughs> <laughs> you mean we're going to catch fire? And for 45 minutes, the plane was going around, 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 and I was enjoying my Lord. When we finished talking, suddenly the gear came out. Mm -hmm. When you have heard from God, you can enjoy the kind of peace that the Bible calls peace like a river. But there is even a peace that is greater than that. The Bible calls it the peace of God that passes on understanding. Uh, the kind of peace you don't really have a way of explaining it. That's, you, that's what you'll find in the text I read to you. Philippians chapter 4 verse 7. Peace of God that passes all understanding. Usually, this kind of peace is based on past experiences. I will give you just one example. Acts chapter 12, from verse 5 to 11. Acts 12, from verse 5 to 11. They were going to kill Peter the following morning. He was fast asleep. <laughs> He wasn't singing and praying like Paul and Silas. No, 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 no. My friend was fast asleep. The angel had to smite him to wake him up. Okay? Uh, this sleep is too deep. Wake up. All the time he was waking up and was getting dressed, he thought it was a dream. How can somebody have that kind of peace in the that kind of crisis. Hey, because of experience. Because in Acts chapter 5, from verse 17 to 25, Acts 5, 17 to 25, Peter had been in prison before. And God got him out. And the doors were left untouched. So he, he wasn't worried. He, <laughs> if he got me out before, he would get me out Again, I mean, because he, he knows that the God he is serving is the God who has the keys of David. According to Revelation chapter 3, from verse 7 to 8, Revelation 3, 7 to 8, the Lord Jesus Christ said, I have the key of David. When I open, no man can shut, 
When I shut, no man can open. If you had experienced this God before, if he had taken you through storms before, then you can have the peace of God that passes all understanding. And I will remind you again of one story. Some of you have heard it before. We were traveling this time to London in British Airways. And I was traveling economy. And those of you who travel economy, you know very well that the food they give you is not much. Which is probably why they give you plenty of coke to shock it. And I was a hungry young man. Just as we took off from Lagos, they've set the table and they brought their little, little food to us. And then the captain said, well, this is your captain. Uh, by the time we get to Heathrow, there's going to be a storm. But don't worry, we'll manage to land. We'll manage to land. <laughs> As soon as he said that, the man sitting next to me froze. He didn't touch his food. For me, I finished my food quickly. Then I looked at him. I said, sir, you are not eating. He was surprised. Because all the time I was eating, he was looking at me with one corner, corner eye. He said, you speak English? I said, yes, sir. <laughs> you heard what the pastor said? I said, yes, sir. I said, you are not eating? He said, no. Can I? <laughs> so I took his plate. I passed my own to him. I finished the food. And I went to sleep. When we got to Heathrow, the pilot came back and said, well, ladies and gentlemen, the weather boys have deceived us. Mm -hmm. The storm that they said is going to be in London is actually going to be in Scotland. <laughs> I looked at my friend. I laughed. He laughed. We were laughing for different reasons. <laughs> I was laughing because there's nothing he can do to get his food back. <laughs> But how did I have that peace that passes all understanding? He has done it before. He will do it again. So one more time, I'm telling you, my children, relax. Amen. All is going to be well. Amen. What you should do today is praise him with all your heart. Thank him because you belong to him at a time like this. In closing. In Isaiah chapter 48, verse 22, Isaiah 48, verse 22, God said in his word, loud and clear, there is no peace to the wicked, said the Lord, no peace. If you are not one of his children, and you are praying for peace, <laughs> Unless the word of God is no longer settled. But I know it is settled. Amen. They said there is no peace to the wicked. However, he made a room for you. In Matthew 11 from verse 28 to 30. Matthew 11, 28 to 30. He said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy lady, and I will give you rest. If you come to him today, you too will begin to enjoy peace. And very soon, as you begin to obey him, your peace will become great peace. As you begin to follow him and to do his will, your peace will become multiplied. Amen. Amen. And before you know it, you will have peace all around. Amen. Body, soul, and spirit. Amen. And then you will soon begin to enjoy peace like a river. Amen. Amen. And very soon your neighbor will begin to look at you and say, how can you be so cool at a time like this? Oh, you will tell them, I have a peace that passes all understanding. Amen. Amen. So, where you are, in your various home, I want you to bow your heads 
if you have not yet given your life to Jesus Christ, I will encourage you to do so now. Because if you give your life to Jesus Christ, if you taste the Lord, you will see that it's good. You give your life to him and you suddenly discover you don't have to worry about anything at all. So, I'm going to pray for all of you where you are. And uh, if you are giving your life to Jesus Christ now, make sure one way or the other you get your name and address to me so I can keep on praying for you. Let us pray. Prince of Peace, I want to thank you. From the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you for moving me from peace to great peace, to multiplied peace, to all round peace, to peace like a river, to a peace without understanding, beyond understanding. And I want to thank you because you promised that you will extend that peace to my children. Amen. Please accept my thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, fulfill your promise. Amen. Let your children have absolute peace. Amen. And let them serve you forever. Amen. Thank you, Almighty God. Thank you, As for those who are surrendering their lives to you today, please receive them. Amen. Wash them clean. Amen. And make them members of your family. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We give glory to God for the powerful message from our daddy. And we know, as usual, today is the first Sunday of the month. And it's our usual Thanksgiving Sunday. And we are here to give God thanks. Just as Noah did in the book of Genesis chapter 8. If we read verse 20, after the flood had subsided, the Bible tells us, Genesis chapter 8, verse 20, it said, Then Noah built an altar to the Lord, and took some of every clean animal, and some of every clean bird, and offered burnt offering on the altar. And when the Lord smelled the pleasing aroma, the Lord said in his heart, I will never again cause the ground because of man for the intention of man's heart is evil from his youth neither will i ever again strike down every living creature as i have done while the earth remains seed time and harvest cold and heat summer and winter day and night shall not cease praise the lord Hallelujah. brethren we want to encourage us that as Noah did, that he built an altar unto the Almighty God. We are here to build an altar of praise to our Maker. And we want our Maker to smell the aroma. And by this, that he will remove this pestilence from the world in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So, I want to encourage us to give unto our Lord. As you propose in your heart. Shall we please pray on our offering. Father we want to give you glory. For today the first Sunday. Of the month of April year 2020. We thank you for all that is happening. The Bible tells us. That all things work together for good. For them that love him. We pray that all these things that are going on will work for good for us in Jesus' name. Amen. King of glory, we pray that you will receive our thanksgiving offering. You will smell the aroma. Amen. And by this offering, King of glory, you will remove this noisome pestilence Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Blessed be the name of God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Please don't forget to pass your offering to your local assembly. 
and God will bless you as you do so. It's time for us to now dance as we know that we have the youths with us in our homes. We have our children. We have the parents. And we have those who have special thanksgiving. I know God has done something for you. That you are alive today. That I am alive today is enough to give thanks to the almighty God. So we shall all rise and dance and appreciate God even for the gift of life. And appreciate him also. Knowing fully well that very soon this noisome pestilence will be a forgotten issue. Amen. And this time shall pass away. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Amen. shall we dance. Choir, over to you. I can see everything turning around, turning around, turning around for my good. I can see everything turning around, turning around, turning around for my good. I can see everything, I can see everything turning around, turning around for my good. Can you see everything turning around, turning around? Turning around for my good, Jehovah, you are so good. You are so good. Hallelujah, you are good. You are so good, Jehovah, you are so good. You are so good. Hallelujah, you are good. You are so good. Almighty God, you are so excellent. You are so good. Hallelujah, you are good. You are so good, Jehovah, you are so good. You are so good. Hey. You are good, you are so good. Jehovah reigns, he reigns, he reigns. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Jehovah reigns, he reigns, he reigns. Jehovah reigns. My God, you reign. You are lifted up above the God. Hey, above the God. Lifted up above on the God, above on the God, above on the God. Yes, you were lifted up above on the God. Hallelujah. That is, you were lifted up above on the God. Hallelujah. Above on the God. You were lifted up above on the God. Above on the God. That is, you were lifted up, lifted up, lifted up. Oh, you were lifted up. Hallelujah, you were lifted up. Oh, yeah, copy a seal, a seal. In Jesus' name, we have given thanks. Somebody shout, Hallelujah. If you're excited that this is your month, shout a better hallelujah. You know God has accepted your thanksgiving offering. Shout hallelujah. Glory, glory be to God. It will be a pleasant month in Jesus' name. Shall we please pray? I want you to go before the Lord and ask God for something very special in this month of April. Something that only God can do. After Solomon has given his sacrifices unto the Lord, the Bible said God asked him and said, Ask me anything. You are giving sacrifice of thanksgiving today. Ask God anything. Don't think about how God will do it. It's more than enough to do it. Even during this period, something new will happen in our lives. There will be pleasant miracles surprises all around us in the mighty name of the lord ask with faith trust the lord is our moment of harvest of miracles harvest of wonders harvest of signs the pronouncements have come upon us today we are going forth to harvest our miracles this month in the mighty name of jesus thank you father in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. And so, Father, we thank you for today. We bless your name because you took control of everything. 
Thank you for the way you have blessed us. Thank you for the way you have surprised us. Thank you for an encounter in your presence. Thank you for touching our lives. Thank you for blessing our destinies. Thank you, Father, for the assurance of a better tomorrow. Glory be to your holy name. Accept our thanks in the mighty name of Jesus. Daddy, accept our thanks in the mighty name of Jesus. As we go, O oh Lord, we pray that your presence will go with every one of us this month in Jesus' name. By the time we will be returning back, O oh Lord, in, in this service again, we pray that God of heaven will come with testimonies. Our hearts will be full of joy. Thank you for hearing us. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Shall we please share the grace in fellowship? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Can you point to someone and say, Surely, Surely. goodness Amen. and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life, and you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Give God a big shout of hallelujah.